pray as we um, you, focus Lord. on this, Father, you, that you will speak to each and every one of us individually, Father. Yes, Father. And that we, Father God, we will grow through this tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Christine. Well, wonderful. Just a very brief review of what we had seen last time. We had come to chapter 3 and we were seeing how when Sholomite has seen her Lord, her King, and she brings him back to the house of, his, of her mother. And over there, then again, the King is saying, do not awake her, but allow her to be quiet and stir her not. And that is why, because the Lord knows the capacity of the believer to what extent he or she can search. And when he realizes that he or she cannot search beyond this, he himself presents to the believer so that again he can come back with, with the believer. But this time, if you see, she has brought him back to the mother's house. And we had also seen that in verse 6, we come to see that there is, there is this moment when Shulamite and the king, they are in the house of the mother. And when we were studying the house of the mother, we were realizing that uh, the Shulamite, or in our sense, the believer, when comes to that position wherein he or she starts realizing the significance of cross, and then realizing what Jesus has done, again gets ready, gets prepared, but this time gets prepared, gets ready in the love and grace of God. And that's because we were seeing that in the house of my mother and into the chamber of her who conceived me. And we were we were going on to see that by the gazes or by the doors of the field, do not stir up nor awaken love until it pleases. So over here, we were reading about the grace. When we speak about the mother, we understand it's the grace of God. When we speak about the chambers of her, we speak about the love of God. And it's, it's under the grace and love of God that God teaches us lots of things. God allows us to know him better. But it's only in his love and in his grace. Interestingly, he is not condemning her. He is not pinpointing her, but he is helping her even at this time to understand who he is. And that's what happens with us. Even when we are, we are not foresighted, when we, we are not wanting to move ahead, God is still with us and in that he tries to teach us who he is and what is he wanting to go ahead with the plans and purposes. But he is just helping her to mature and therefore he says, do not disturb her at this moment, but allow her to know me better. And then we come to the interesting part. Now again, from verse 6 to ahead verse 11. Um, some of the commentators have said that this is what the Shulamite is saying. But if you see the language, you will realize that this is not something said by the Shulamite, but this is something said by the third person. This is not coming from the king, neither it is coming from the Shulamite, but it is coming from the bystander. The expression of Holy Spirit is expressed by a third person. And see what this third person is, uh, is, is saying about the Shulamite. And this is what he, he says. Who is this coming out of the wilderness like pillars of smoke, perfumed with myrrh and frankincense, with all the merchants' fragrant powders? So one, there is a question. The question is about the Shulamite. So Shulamite herself is not asking this question, but a bystander, a third person on behalf of Holy Spirit is expressing this thought and is speaking this. And the question is very interesting. It says, who is this coming out of the wilderness? We know that Shulamite was in the house of her mother. She is in the chambers of her mother's house. 
and she is with the Lord there. She is with the king. And we know that the believer is with the Lord in his safest place. But then the expression in verse 6 says that she is coming out of the wilderness. Now, wilderness very clearly speaks of the life of wandering. It speaks of Egypt. In a uh, in few other translations, the word used is come, coming up out of. And it is said because it is the movement from Egypt towards Canaan the promised land where Lord wants to take us. But this exit of Shulamite from wilderness and moving out of wilderness is not instantaneous. It is a gradual progression. It is a bit by bit she is taking this confident step to move out. But now when she is moving out, earlier she had moved out of the chamber because she missed the king. She missed her Lord. When she was searching on the bed, she couldn't find him. And so out of anxiety, out of, out of, uh, out of that hunger and thirst, she had moved out to search on the streets and the corners, right? But this time, she is coming out, but she is coming out of the wilderness. She is coming out of that life of wandering. She is coming out of that earthly life. She is coming out of that out of that Egypt and she is moving towards Canaan but this movement is after spending time with the Lord which we had seen in earlier verses in verse 5 the way the Lord is saying allow her to be with me so that is the time when God has expressed himself God has manifested himself in the form of revelations in the form of different experiences See, and when this person is coming out, is not coming out of anxiety or curiosity or, or search, but is coming out with knowledge, is coming out with information, is coming out with experience, is coming out drenched and soaked with the love of God. So this exit is different from the earlier exit. I hope I'm making the difference. This exit is with a lot of understanding of who God is, is with a lot of wisdom what God can do, is with a lot of uh, knowledge of what the love of God can be and what the grace of God can do for me. Mm. See, and then with that understanding, now Shulamite or the believer is coming out and this coming out appears like coming out of wilderness. Okay. Now, why wilderness? There is something that we will see in the next verse, uh, next line. It says, like pillars of smoke. So the pillars of smoke, to understand what the pillars of smoke mean, probably we will have to go to Joel. The prophet Joel, chapter 2, verse 30. Would someone please read Joel chapter 2 verse 30 to understand what this pillar of smoke means. Chapter 2 verse 30. Yes, please. Okay. I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth. Yes. Blood and fire and pillows of smoke. Awesome. So if you read from verse 28, you will realize that God here is talking about the spirit. He is talking about the spirit, the Holy Spirit. And this Holy Spirit is represented here as fire and pillar of smoke. So this Shulamite at this juncture, when she is exiting from the chamber, she appears to come out of wilderness. But look at the difference. At this time, she is filled with the Holy Spirit. She is filled with the anointing of the Spirit of God. And therefore, the poet is saying that she looks like pillars of smoke. Now, the smoke is something we can easily imagine will disperse pretty easily. But when we speak about the pillar, when the word pillar is used, we know that pillar is something that is going to stay there. 
it's actually an anchor of that building. See, but this anchor now is through the spirit of God. This, this strength in her is through the spirit of God. Earlier, her, her strength was her feel, the feel that she had about God. But this time, the strength of this believer is not the feel, but the spirit of God. The Holy Spirit that has filled her, being with the king, being with the Lord in the earlier verse, the, the time that she has spent, the time that believer is spending, there are times when we literally need to take a break and just be soaked with his word, be soaked with his love, be soaked with his revelations. Those are not the times when we go and share those revelations. Those are not the times when we continuously speak, but we are just at the receiving end. And the more we receive, actually our roots go deeper and deeper and deeper. And the deeper the roots go, the stronger the tree becomes. The, the vision of this Deep-rooted believer will be like pillar of smoke. Acts chapter 2, verse 3 and 4, please. Let's see Acts chapter 2. Third and fourth verse. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And this is possible only and only by Jesus, because that's what John the Baptist had said, that I baptize you with the water, but the one who cometh after me shall baptize you with the Spirit and fire see and that baptism has been received by the believer at this juncture and with that baptism when she or the believer is coming out is appearing as if he's coming out of the of the wilderness this move is slow this move is not spontaneous that she brought him into the chambers of mother and very next moment they are coming out. No, there is a span. There is a time frame wherein they were quiet. They were just with each other. And in that time frame, she is filled with the spirit of God. And now being filled with the spirit of God is now coming out. Earlier was coming out with different reason, but now she is coming out being filled with the Holy Spirit and the, and the pillars, the pillars of smoke are visible there. Oh, this pillar is firm and trustworthy. Re Revelation chapter 3 verse 12 speaks about the firmness and the trustworthiness of this, of this pillar. Revelation chapter 3 verse 12 in NKJV reads, He who overcomes... I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God and he shall go out no more. The firmness. See, now there is no more going out of the presence of God, but is firmly rooted in the temple of God so that continuously this believer is now wanting or is living in the presence of God. And the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God. And I will write on him my new name. Chapter three, chapter 3, verse 12. Oh, Revelation chapter 3, verse 12 speaks about the nature of this pillar. See the difference that is coming up? Now, God, I, the, the one thing that I really like is, and I get impressed is, God in nowhere in this journey is ever condemning the believer that I had expected that you will be by this time of this nature or you would be blessed with so many things. But now he is patient enough and he is walking. He is walking with the believer. And that's something we, I wish that we all remember that he is patient and he will walk with us and ensure things will be good with us. Let's move ahead what the poet says. Like pillars of smoke, right? And then goes on to say, 
perfumed with myrrh and frankincense. Now, when the word perfumed is used, it means that the, that the thing needs to be soaked in the perfume and then that thing will release fragrance. Am I with you? So if you, if you have a piece of wood and we want this piece of wood to spread some fragrance, first we need to soak that piece of wood in perfume. And then when we keep this piece of wood outside, it will start spreading the fragrance. And that's the word here it is. Perfumed with myrrh. So you and I as believer, we need to be soaked in myrrh and frankincense. Unless we are soaked in that, we ourselves cannot spread that. It has to work inside us and only then it can be expressed outside. And that is one of the reasons why, uh, why, why we really need to take time to know who God is. See, Paul himself had spent time before coming out and teaching. He took time to learn, to study, to experience. I put it as, 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 as the poet has said. See, he says, we have to be perfumed with myrrh and frankincense. Now, the word myrrh will always represent cross of Jesus Christ. Myrrh will always represent cross of Jesus Christ. If we see Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, come to epistle of Philippians chapter 3. Verse 10 says, can, would someone like to read for me, please? Or shall I read for you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, oh, in my read, <laughs> it reads, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. To that extent, I would like to know him. Know him in his power of resurrection. Know him in the fellowship of his sufferings. The mere and the frankincense. The mere represents the cross, my dear brothers and sisters. And the word frankincense speaks of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So we need to be perfumed with the experience of cross and the experience of resurrection. When we are perfumed with that, only then we will be able to share that fragrance to the society or the world around us. Being soaked takes time. To be soaked takes time. It cannot be just you dip and bring out and you will stay long. No, the deeper or the longer you are soaked in, the longer you can share or spread the fragrance. One thing that I want to bring before you, probably you must have noted is, it speaks of the cross and then the resurrection. So Jesus lived and then he died. For a believer, we first die and then we live. Isn't it? So Jesus lived and then he died. For a believer, we first die on the cross and there begins our life. Before that death with Jesus on the cross, however good we would like to show ourselves, it just doesn't cause any impact or change on anyone's life. Even the words spoken can be only knowledge best. But once someone has experienced cross in his or her life, even the broken message, incomplete message can change lives. I, I can surely say that on the basis of my experience, the same messages which I had spoken before going through the experience of cross were not making the impact which I saw 
making the impact after the experience of cross. And I often wondered, why are people loving this message today so much? I've spoke this same message before, and why wasn't there that? And the reason is the cross. The cross. Experience of cross is never easy. Experience of cross is painful. It's hard. It's full of tears. It's full of repentance. It's full of uh, seeing yourself humbling, very, very humbling. And when someone goes through that, we often want to pray, God, save him from that, release him from that. But that's our human nature. But God knows that with this experience, he or she shall become a better wine. perfumed with myrrh and frankincense. When we are full of that, and there is so much of emphasis on fragrance, remember that. I often think about the flower rose. <laughs> Monica often says, I see so many colors of roses in New Zealand. I wonder, I never saw so many colors in India and over here, everywhere, there are so many colors, so many colors. Yeah, that's so true. New Zealand is so, so colorful. And there are times when you pass by certain flowers, you just get attracted by the fragrance of those flowers. Tiny white colored flowers I saw, which would be like weed spread around and you pass by and you just, you just smell that and you feel like, wow, where's this smell coming from? And you know that it's from the weeds. And often I say, man, even the weeds are so good here. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but the truth is, what I'm trying to say is, when a believer is full of the presence of God, when he's filled with Holy Spirit and is like a smoke pillar, that is when even we, without being intentional in speaking or sharing, the fragrance will just reach out to the people. People will just by seeing you know that there is some difference. The way you talk, the topics that you talk, the, the way you respond to different situations and things will speak to people because that is the fragrance of Christ that is spreading from our life. And what a wonderful place that is, my dear brothers and sisters, that without we realizing, the fragrance is just spreading around you. People will be attracted to you without even you putting any efforts in inviting them. That is the place where, where Shilamite is, where the believer is, and we know the reason. The reason is the time spent in the chamber. The reason is the infilling of the Holy Spirit. The reason is the moving out now with confidence. There is no word of feeling anymore, but is the pillar, pillar in the temple of God, in the presence of God, knowing the tangible presence of God. Now not waiting to feel that, but just knowing that he is indeed with me. And there is enough freedom between Shulamite and the king, between the believer and the Lord. Oh, this is lovely. And then the poet goes on to say, with all the merchants, fragrant powders. So there are two words that are used here. There are the merchant is being referred and then speaks about again the perfumed powders. So everything that this merchant had was received by the believer or by the Shulamite. And that is the question being asked. Who is she? That she is full of the presence of the Spirit of God. She is soaked with the presence of God that the fragrance is coming out. And look at this. It's not only the mayor. It's not only the fragrance, uh, fr frankincense. It's not only the cross. Not only the, the, the experience of resurrection. But all variety of powders that the merchant had. She seems to have that with her. The word merchant is being used here. Just to help us understand that she had to purchase that. That 
powder was not received by her free but there was a cost that she had paid see she had to pay a cost in her life the experiences that she had gone through to experience cross there was a cost to pay it's never when we say that the experience of cross is not easy what exactly we try to mean is that there was cost that we had paid we lost certain things which probably were very dear to us in human form we we got released from them certain habits certain addictions certain people sometimes certain things certain we just got just knew that that is a hurdle for your growth but the truth is there was a cost and therefore the word merchant is used here if you see the parable of matthew chapter 13 verse 45 we we see the word merchant again used matthew chapter 13 and uh, 45th verse reads let me read for you nkjv says again the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls <laughs> who when he had found one pearl of great price went and sold all that he had and brought it so here is jesus with all the goodness with all different things but the believer needs to know that there will be cost to be paid to receive these powders the word powders that is used are the spiritual blessings and gifts that we have that jesus has achieved for us but we to receive there will be phase there will be there will be a journey there will be uh, there will be a path that we need to follow wherein we need to get rid of certain things and those are that's why the word merchant is used because we have lost something and we have paid some cost and therefore we have gained i don't want to call it as persecution but I do want to call it as trials. The trials that come in our life always will lead in higher glory. The trials that we have in our life will always lead for higher glory. And therefore, the authors of the Bible, Holy Spirit, through different authors, again and again encourage us that if you are going through trials, rejoice rejoice because they had learned that every time they have gone through any trial they saw higher glory coming into their lives they saw higher anointing coming into their lives they saw more works in their lives they saw more holy spirit move through their life but the reason they realized was the trials that they were going through and therefore the word merchant for fragrant powders i love the word fragrant and i i just feel like rose doesn't have to reach out to to the to 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 anyone or to, for that for that matter to the honey bee the rose doesn't have to reach out the honey bee reaches to it because of the fragrance that's where god wants to take you and me wherein we will be so full of his presence that wherever we go, that will just bring change in that environment. That will just cause change in the people. If you are visiting a family, if you are visiting a workplace, if you are visiting a social place, things will just cha start changing mere by the presence. Because you carry dense presence of God in you. Now, this was true even in her earlier exit, but she did not know that because her idea was that she wants to search the presence, the feel of the presence of God. But this time, she is much aware. <laughs> that is the difference. She is much wise now. She has understood this, that when my Lord is with me, he is with me. When he has said that I am with you, he is with me, in me. He is 
in me and therefore now I can be a fragrant spreading fragrance spreading person anywhere I go so we are in verse verse 6 right and in verse 6 we see that there is a question asked about Shulamite or the question is asked about the believer who is this who is coming out okay so the answer expected should be with respect to the believer or the Shulamite let's see what the poet does in verse 7 so verse 7 reads would someone like to read verse 7 of chapter 3 Song of Solomon look it is Solomon's carriage escorted by 60 warriors the noblest of Israel mm. I was wondering that the answer should include Shulamite because the question was about the Shulamite but the answer is about the king okay we will come to that gradually why king was referred in the answer but let us see what does this verse 7 say what is being spoken about King Solomon so in different versions different words are used uh, in some versions probably in KJV the word used is Solomon's bed in NKJV I have got Solomon's couch and uh, uh, Lindsay has read from if I'm not wrong NIV mm -hmm. and that was saying Solomon's carriage yes. does anyone else have any other word please What, what word is used in your Bible, Dorothy? Or bed? Okay. Christine, what about your Bible? Carriage. Carriage. Okay. So we will, we will come to that part very soon. Why this word is used? Because, uh, because there is an explanation given about that word in following verse. We'll, we'll come to that. But I'm just requesting you to remember that there is this type of word being used, which is a bit different. Cool. Okay. What does it say? Solomon's couch or bed or carriage. Well, why that is used, we will come to that later. But one thing is clear that Solomon is resting. Am I right? When he is using the word couch or bed or carriage, it actually says that Solomon, the king, is resting and he is resting, being surrounded with 60 valiant men, warriors of Israel. In fact, verse 8 goes on to say, they all hold swords, being expert in war. Every man has his sword on his thigh because of fear in the night that's what verse 8 says so verse 7 and 8 they're speaking about solomon in response to the question of shulamite so in response to the question of the position of the believer description is given about the lord and see the description of the lord description says that he is at peace he is at rest when he is at rest there are 60 warriors surrounding him and ensuring peace and rest over there. This 60 valiant men speaks about the power, the authority of Jesus Christ. The authority and the power that Jesus Christ has gained with resurrection. He has all power. Why do I say that? Because in verse 8, the last line says, because of fear in the night. So when we are talking about the night, when we are talking about the fear in the night, we understand that there are problems all around. There are temptations, there is storm all around. But in that storm, the Lord is on his bed or couch or carrier. And he is at absolute peace. Peace. Because he's surrounded with his power, with his authority that he has gained with resurrection. With the experience of cross and resurrection, he has got the authority. And in that authority, irrespective of what the enemy is trying to do all around, he is reigning there. And that is what the poet is wanting us to understand. <laughs> the valiant of Israel 
and they hold swords being experts in war they know how to face the challenges they are well trained they are well equipped he knows see this is what the bible tells us in the book of hebrew he was the one he is the one who has gone through all temptations and yet without sin so he knows all the temptations that any believer can go through any challenge that a believer can go through he knows that and over and above that he is at peace because he has gained authority and power with his resurrection that is the stage that is the the place of our lord jesus christ remember it is night remember there is fear the word fear here that is used i don't know what word is used in your translation but the actual word that should be used here would should be warning there are lots of warnings from the enemy Moses prepared for the terrors of the night. Terrors of the night, yes. Mm. Any other word used in any other version? No? Yeah, the terrors of the night, the fear of the night, the warnings of the night. So there are lots of the the storm is pretty hard. Know that the situation is not easy. The situation is not easy, but in that horrible situation the lord of lords and the king of kings with all authority reigns he reigns once again i want to remind you the question was about the believer but we are speaking about the lord <laughs> we'll come to that but just i'm trying to remind you because it's interesting what position jesus is in and then verse 9 goes on to say of the wood of Lebanon Solomon the king made himself a palanquin now this is another word that i would like to see what is given in other versions would you mind reading verse 9 please king solomon made for himself the carriage he made it of wood from lebanon oh cool uh christian what does your mine's the same same mm -hmm. okay Uh, yeah yeah okay so nkjv says of the wood of lebanon so king solomon made a carriage of uh, of uh, the wood of lebanon so first let us begin with the word wood wood actually speaks of humanity a humble human life humanity so he makes this carriage or palanquin the word that is used in my bible is made out of wood of lebanon but when it comes to of lebanon it speaks of uplifted humanity uplifted humanity and so king solomon has made himself this carriage i like the word carriage because it is so close to the actual hebrew word that should have been used here or even the word palanquin actually means chariot but not run on wheels but carried by men okay. palanquin or the carriage actually means something like ark of god which was to be carried only by the sons of chaos no one else it should not be on anything else but should be carried by the people of god the presence of god will be only and only with his people that is what he is wanting to say he made the carriage with the wood of lebanon but this carriage speaks now comes the real picture my dear brothers and sisters now comes the real picture now this picture i'll tell you what it is leading us to he is telling he is speaking about Helen Queen he's speaking about this carriage he's speaking something that King Solomon has made it with the wood of Lebanon so there was intentionally made carriage he chose the wood and he and in further verse uh, next lines we see how he made that carriage let let's see how this chariot without wheels is made 
First, it is made from wood of Lebanon. Fantastic. Verse 10 reads, He made its pillars of silver. Okay. Its support, its support of gold. Its seat of purple. The interior paved with love by the daughters of Jerusalem. So this chariot or this carriage, which was made by King, which is made by Lord Jesus Christ, there is a description of this chariot. And he says, this is made of simple or uplifted human because he has used the word Lebanon. So he has used uplifted human. Who are this uplifted human? This uplifted human are the ones which are purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. Then he goes on to say the pillars of silver. The pillars of silver speaks of the redemption from Christ, by Christ. The redemption that man has received. So he has made the pillars of silver and when he applies the silver, he is meaning to say that unless, unless we have that experience of redemption, we cannot show forth Christ. Our flesh has to be excavated and then and only then Christ will be manifested. See? Redemption speaks about how Christ is to be carried to others. The work of cross has to remove all flesh. Only then we can express Christ, my dear brothers and sisters. So he chose this human which are purchased by the blood of Christ. And what is next done? There has been excavation of all the flesh from these ones so that Christ is manifested. And the third thing he speaks about is its support of gold. Gold speaks of godliness. Everything that we have or these uplifted humans, the wood of Lebanon, everything that it has, the source is only and only God. The source is not my education. The source is not my talent. Source is not my caliber. No, the source now is only and only God. And therefore the word gold is used. Wherever the word gold is used, it speaks of godliness. The heaven, the God of heaven and earth. He is the source. And then he goes on to say, the seed of purple. The purple speaks of Lord's kingship, the authority, the royalty of Jesus Christ. He is not only the source, but he is the owner. He runs the show. He governs. Bible says in the book of Isaiah that the garment is on his shoulders. That is Jesus who is building this uh, chariot. He is building this carriage with all these ingredients. With all these ingredients. He is giving his redemption. He is giving his blood. He is giving oh, the gold. The, the, the source is gold, God. And then he goes on to say that my lordship or my governorship will be there. The seed of purple. And then the last one is most beautiful. The last line is the most beautiful. It says, it's interior paved with love. Whose love? By the daughters of Jerusalem. Who are these daughters of Jerusalem? Dear brothers and sisters, this poet is speaking about the overcomers. Speaking about the overcomers. And now if you see the verse 10, 9 and 10, now you will understand what is Jesus preparing? What type of chariot he is talking about? What type of carriage he is talking about? This carriage has to be carried by men. The presence of God will be into this. But what is this? When we go word by word, you will see that he is talking about the church. 
the love of the daughters of Jerusalem, the love of the brothers and sisters, when they get together, that is what brings the beauty in the inner side of this chariot. This chariot is beautified by the love, by the unity, by the oneness of the brothers and sisters inside. And who are they? They are the overcomers. You and me, we together, we together are win. We together are, are the beauty of this chariot that Jesus is making, is building. Who were we? We were simple human beings. But he uplifted us by purchasing us by his own blood. And then he gave us redemption. He made God our source. And he became the king, the author and finisher. He became the one who was governing. And then he says, but the beauty of this chariot is the love of the brothers and sisters. And he's talking about the church. That's the reason when the question in verse 6 was about Shilomite, the answer is about the king. Because now, as we move bit by bit slowly ahead into verse 11, know that the relationship between the believer and the Lord, which was earlier friendly, now is getting converted into marital. A relationship of marriage. She is getting espoused. And when she is getting espoused with the Lord, they both become one. And therefore, anything that belongs to the king belongs to the believer. Anything that belongs to the believer now is belonging to the Lord. Because they are becoming one in marriage. They are getting espoused with each other. And therefore, when the question was asked about the believer, the answer is about the king. Because now there is no difference. Are you getting me? And therefore, the poet is speaking about the king, about the king, and not. But then he tells us, he takes initiative. Jesus himself takes initiative and tells who or how his bride is. How his bride is, whom he is building. No wonder Jesus says in the New Testament, I build my church. That's what exactly he is doing in verse 9 and 10. I'm looking at the clock and I realize we have crossed time. <laughs> we'll get on to verse 11 and move ahead next time. Okay. Mm, awesome, beautiful, isn't it? Let's close with a prayer. May I request Lindsay, uh, would you please lead us in prayer, please? Yes.